Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. So, today I want to address two really big questions, and that is, can the Gibson Custom Buckers do high gain and metal, and do they feed back? So those are two questions that I get asked a lot, and just wanted to go ahead and make a follow-up video to my other video where I played through my Dr. Z amp and played some low gain material. I think everybody knows that these pickups are absolutely fantastic at doing classic rock, jazz, all the things that you expect a Les Paul to do in the vintage realm, but not a lot of people really step out and do heavy metal and stuff like that. So today I want to address those questions thoroughly. And the short answer is yes, absolutely. Of course they're going to do high gain, they're going to do metal. But a lot of people don't know, are they going to feed back? Are they going to do well in a, in a loud band setting, especially playing high gain? And the short answer to that is maybe. So that depends on your situation. So today what I want to do is we're going to go through several different setups, several different amps, let you hear how they're going to sound in your application. So... Um, I'll get right to the playing. Um, what we're going to do is going to start off with my custom Seriatone amp, which is really it's a 100 watt high watt modeled after uh, Jimmy Page's 1969 high watt. And there's pretty much going to be no clean playing whatsoever today. So with that, we're going to run through two pedals. They're going to be um, a fuzz pedal and a high gain um treble booster after that we'll move over to um, actually a diesel VH4 preamp then an orange rocker verb and then my Mesa Boogie Mark III <coughs> we'll try and cover a whole bunch of different styles and genres essentially as fast as I can um, and for sake of everything going to use the exact same cab which is a Mesa Boogie 412 with vintage 30s it's just a sound that everybody knows um, it's mic'd up with a vintage um, Unidon 3 SM57 and a Sterling ST170 ribbon mic going into uh, an Apollo 8P. Alright, so we're going to crack on and get right to it. Uh, this is the sound of the Les Paul, which has been in all my videos. It's been really well play tested. It's well broken in now. It sounds great. Uh, it, these are still fantastic pickups. I don't have anything bad to say about them. Uh, this is the sound of the guitar going into the cherry tone. Cherry tone, sorry. <laughs> Tuned in drop D, later we'll move to drop C. So it's not really high gain. It's right there, like on the verge of breakup. It's great for classic rock, songs like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like with a uh, tone bender fuzz pedal. So again... High gain, but it's high gain fuzz. It's not heavy metal prog rock. Yet, we'll get there.
So even with all that fuzz, still no feedback really, and I'll let you hear. I mean, those pickups are not wax potted. I can tap the, I can tap the pickup and, you know, definitely have a lot of harmonics going on with that fuzz. Roll the volume back, and you can hear that. Sounds gigantic in the room. I'm going to go ahead, turn that off, and we'll move over to the Chandler Germanium Drive. This thing is a super-duper secret weapon in the studio. It can cover everything from 70s rock to overdriven sounds, Queen sounds, Led Zeppelin sounds. But it's also really killer at heavy metal, too. Especially you put it on an amp that's already got a little bit of drive going on. It'll go totally over the top. It will absolutely squeal. The pedal itself is wax potted. So the uh, the germanium element inside is wax potted to reduce microphonics. So when you combine it with, with pickups that are not wax potted, you got to be really careful. And I've got the amp blasting loud. We're well above 100 decimals or probably at 115 or 120. So again, here's the amp by itself. <laughs> You can immediately hear that noise floor go oh, way up. All right. Short answer, yes, even from a vintage amp. Now, let's move on to the diesel VH4. All right, and now, through the magic of editing, we're now hooked up to the diesel VH4-2 preamp into the PV Classic 120 monoblock. That combination is absolutely epic sounding. Uh, we're going into the second channel, not the first channel, so it's the higher gain of the two channels. Um, if you don't know what the diesel VH4 is in its amplifier form, it is a goliath of rock and metal sounds. And just like its big brother, the preamp by itself is equally awesome. 
Uh, you'd probably be forgiven for not knowing what the PV Classic 120 is. It's essentially the power section out of the original 5150. It's American made. It's 120 watts of just absolute tube muscle. Usually I'm using it to power my Leslie, but um, I will also use it to power the VHT, or not VHT, excuse me, um, diesel uh, VH2 uh, 120 preamp. Uh, it's monstrous. I've got it turned way down uh, to like three right now. And I've got the gain actually cut back so it keeps its definition. Um, just like my Mesa Mark III, it will get gobs and gobs and gobs of gain. Way more than you will actually ever need. And it will become microphonic. because it does have all the high frequencies, so you have to be careful with your playing and your muting like a big boy or a big girl. So without further ado, um, everybody would probably be mad at me if I didn't play uh, some tool riffs. Not like this is probably going to end up demonetized anyway. So... <laughs> got all the goodies in it it does everything you expect for a vh4 to do of course this isn't a review of the pedal this is telling you how the pickups are going to react to an amplifier so <laughs> The PAFs have got all the harmonics. They're doing everything that really a high-gain pickup should. It's on you, the player, to control your rig. Um, but, like I said, are they going to feed back? Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah. If you don't know how to control feedback, they're going to. And again, too, this is on the higher of the two gain channels.
I'm just noodling on some riffs, so pay no attention. But let's move on. We're going to move on from the VH4 to the Orange Rocker Verb 50, because I know you guys love some stoner and doom, and there's tons of Orange fans out there. But we're not going to go with the vintage Marshall cabs or the vintage speakers. We're going to stick with the vintage 30s, so sorry. All right, let's move on. All right, and now through the power of heavy metal and friendship, we are now plugged into the Orange Rocker Verb 50 Mark II, and the guitar is tuned into drop C. Because, of course, I also have a couple of pedals set up. The mighty Japanese HM2 and the best tube screamer out of my collection. Because, of course, we got to play something boosted. So, uh, we're still going into the Mesa. We're going to cut right to the beat. As you can hear, you get more high frequencies. Here you get feedback. And this one's got it. But this one's also got the goodies. If you're looking for Swamp, Stoner, Doom, those kind of sounds, you're going to get it with the Orange. You're going to get it with Custom Buckers. But you're going to get feedback. So you may want to hop on a noise suppressor, just wanted to show you that. So this is on the lead channel, of course. So to answer the question, does it feed back? Sometimes. Again, depends on your rig. Back on the neck pickup now. Everything's full tilt boogie. Tube screamer's off. This is just amp, guitar. So, big, big sounds, uh, a lot of musicality, so there's a lot to play with if you're an orange player and you know how to play with those sounds. Um, I just wanted to show you the raw sound with no delay, no reverb, anything like that. Uh, let's jump into some more articulate sounds. <laughs> pull-offs have got a lot of a lot of meat a lot of meat and potatoes in there
yeah, all those kind of desert rock, stoner rock riffs, man. I mean, the orange does it, and these custom buckers work really well for those kind of sounds. <laughs> Move over to the HM2 in the clean channel. Let's see how that sounds. So this is one of the few times I'm gonna hit the clean. Just because Orange has so many mids. It and the Mesa Boogie has so much mids. string the guitar so this is still intense. So for all the HM2 lovers, can it do Swedish death metal? say yes does it feedback uh yeah a little bit pretty normal though that's pretty good doom sound too with all those mids just sucked out probably terrible solo sound unique sounding though all right so let's hit it with a two screamer we'll go back to the lead channel we right now we got the gain just like tippity topped out to all seven stages i'm going to back it out to like five stages and then boost it one of the cool things about the rock reverb is you can hear it going down in its gain stages so heavy metal off <laughs> So now it's boosted with the tube screamer. Um, will it feedback? Yep, real bad because it's got all those high frequencies back in it from the tube screamer uh, from the clipping circuit. <laughs> Thank you. 
great solo tones. Tube Screamer doing what it says on the tin. And works great with the rocker verb. So I call that a win. Uh, Y'all comment down below what you think. And now we're going to move on to the great and mighty Mark III Boogie. So finally we are back with an amp that likely needs no introduction in the metal community. This is my amp that I toured with for a very, very, very long time. It's a 60-watt 1994 Mesa Boogie Mark III with no EQ. So, uh, this is Blue Stripe. It's the very last of the Mark III production run. Technically, the Mark III's were not being made anymore. This one was originally ordered as a combo, and uh, then I rack-mounted it for touring, and uh, now I have it in a uh, head shell. It is kind of retired. Um, I really only use it for studio work. It is absolutely a monster, uh, just like the two C's before it. Um, Mike Benedelli R2 modified it, and so, yeah, if you know much about Mesa Boogies and Mark II C Pluses and this generation of Mark Threes and their kind of series of modifications, you'll know how absolutely brutal and unforgiving and laser beam like they are from everything from country to jazz to heavy metal, and this one I used for progressive metal. So, can PAFs do metal? We'll start clean. Well, actually, this is on the lead channel, and so all these sounds are just going to be on the lead channel. Same kind of riffs I was playing on the uh, the orange. mentioning I've got an ISP decimator in the loop of this amp which is not on right now just to demonstrate because so many uh, metal players use some kind of noise reduction system to control their noise but I really wanted to show it on this amp because this amp is so laser tight and so unforgiving and has so many extreme high frequencies <laughs> Turn the decimator on. Just uh, to show you how, how much the any kind of noise reduction system can help with PAFs and a live situation. <laughs> Now off. Back on. 
one. Now, are these uh, custom buckers as laser beam tight as DeMarzio's? You know, no, they're not. But they definitely have their place. Uh, for sure. <laughs> That's a riff. So, in short, can Gibson custom buckers play metal? Yep, they sure can. Uh, they can do pretty much everything that you want them to. Are they as sharp and fine-tuned as modern pickups? No, they're not. Um, but if you are thinking about something like Pearly Gates or Throwback, you know, Seymour Duncan Custom Shop, some of the other boutique pickup makers, uh, 8 Bomb. I'd really like to get a set of his pickups. I've had some other uh, boutique pickup manufacturers, Sheptone. I got a set of his pickups. They're, they're really good too. Um, I think that at the price point that they're at, if you want to take a Les Paul, a Gibson Les Paul, an Epiphone, something like that, throw them in there and have the best Les Paul that you want. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Um, is it going to do modern prog? Sure, yeah. Um, is it going to be as absolutely laser tight as like polyphony or something like that? Out of the box, no. You're still going to need your standard fare of heavy metal stuff. Uh, you want to throw a fuzz on top of it. You want to put it in front of your, your favorite uh, stoner doom amp, your favorite high gain amp. Yeah, your fundamental tone is still going to sound like your fundamental tone. It's still going to sound like a vintage Les Paul. It's going to perform really well. Um, is it going to sound like a Strat or a Tele? Nope, you're still going to need a Strat or a Tele for that. So, um, comment below what you think. Um, tell me your thoughts. I'd really like to hear them. Once again, um, Sonic Provocateur, I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, rock on. Have a great day.